The political divide that has shaken the country over the past few months continues to be felt even as Israel marks Remem- Remembrance Day for fallen soldiers and victims of terror, as well as it- its Independence Day. Can the public put aside these differences during what are generally considered Israel's most national sacred days? To discuss this issue, the Jerusalem Press Club host Professor Yedidia Stern, president of the Jewish People Policy Institute and a law professor. Stern was the dean of the law faculty in Bar Ilan University and the vice president of the Israel Democracy Institute. Professor Stern, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. The right wing claims it always maintained the sanctity of national symbols during times when trust with the government was shaky, for example, during months before the disengagement. Is this true in your view? And how would you describe the left behavior today? Well, uh, right now, as opposed to uh, other times, like before the Oslo Accord, uh, right now, the two halves of the Israeli nation feels uncomfortable with the other half. It's on, it is not one-sided as it used to be that the right-wingers feel that they are being pushed aside. Right now, we have a coalition composed of right-wingers and they push their agenda and nevertheless the left responded and the center responded in a very aggressive way demonstrating and now no one in israel feels a winner and i want to surprise you and tell you that i think this is the best situation to be in we do not want to have winners here we have two half of the country of the nation uh, conducting a major major dispute over the character of the state if somebody will win the other will be a chronic loser and you don't want to be a chronic loser so disregarding my personal view i wish that uh, uh, nobody will take it over but everybody will be happy enough to feel that this is still his place in the full sense of the word his uh, homeland and in order to do that we need to celebrate the coming days tomorrow and the day after together as one nation but national days in israel were always considered something maybe holy something beyond any argument and controversy what's changed well obviously right now uh, we have the most severe social dispute ever in uh, the life of the state you cannot just switch uh, off the dispute just because the calendar shows you it's a specific day you have to try this is uh, what i think we should do but people do have emotions anyhow on these days and when you have dispute of the character of the day and you celebrate the independence of the state it uh, interferes obviously i don't think that we can uh, shut up those who really emotionally feel that uh, they are hurt but what by whatever is going on I hope we'll be able to conduct our dispute even on these, so to speak, holidays in a civil heroism, which means, this is my opinion, I don't like what you do, I respect you, I have tolerance to you, I'll voice my opinion, but please respect it, and vice versa. So from now on, there are no more holy cows at all? No, no, I think this is too harsh of a prediction. I really hope uh, that we are now in a, in a crisis. But uh, first of all, a crisis uh, tends to end up, uh, and I hope it will happen faster uh, than anticipated. I'm not sure it will, but uh, you, you have to realize a crisis is also a chance for a new beginning. A new beginning. Right now we have the Israeli Air Force, which is a major player in our dispute uh, in uh, pushing forward uh, uh, the demonstrations on one hand and celebrating the Independence Day the day after tomorrow. This is our life here in Israel. Sorrow and happiness. We have a lot of things uh, to be proud of. And you know what? Even the way we can handle this dispute is a reason to be proud. How many nations do you know will have thousands, hundreds of thousands of people coming every week to the street with a flag, no violence whatsoever so far. I hope it will stay this way. This is a civil heroism. 
So we know to have, um, you know, heroism on the battlefield. It is tougher and different to have heroism in the streets of Tel Aviv. And this is the way we conduct our demonstrations and I'm very proud of it. Okay, so this leads me to my next question. From your per perception, and when you put aside all those disagreements, you think it is safe to say that most Israelis are proud or happy with their country on its 75th uh, anniversary? No doubt, no doubt. You see it in every poll. Uh, Israelis, first of all, they're happy on a personal level. Uh, you know, the UN has a happiness index coming every year. And Israel is number, I think, five or six in the whole world. But you ask me about the state, not about a personal, the personal level. Well, about 80% of Israelis are proud to be Israelis. And by the way, it includes Israeli Arabs to a large degree, about 60%. And it also includes Haredim, which are Orthodox, who are proud to be Israelis, more than 50%. So altogether, I think Israelis are proud to be Israelis. So there's a lot of things to, to celebrate. Listen, uh, the Zionist movement is the only national movement in the 20th century that was able to form a state, a nation state, without bloodshed. This is an amazing thing. And from this, Israel became democracy. And from democracy, we have the open society. And the open society was allowed us to be leaders in, uh, in uh, high tech. And uh, Israel is a very successful place. We have a crisis now. Israelis are not giving up the dream. They're fighting for the dream. Each side is coming out with a flag, the same flag. So we do have some level of solidarity and we don't, we shouldn't let the voices from the extreme on either side to dictate us the general uh, mood of the nation. Okay, something maybe that uh, personally on my personal level uh, making me sad in the past few days is maybe the general or some specific attitude towards the ultra-Orthodox, the Haredim, uh, who were called out regarding the Remembrance Day and some, minister was, some ministers were asked not to come to the cemeteries following the cause that they don't serve in the military. Uh, what do you think about this? Well, you have to realize that the majority who is non-Haredi feels threatened by demography. We know that the Haredi families tend to be very large, on average 6.9 kids per family. And if demography stays the same way, uh, they will have a quarter of the nation and uh, later on maybe third. And since they have a very particular way of life, people uh, feel uh, scared by the option that they will be a dominant power in Israeli society with their own set of ideas and ideologies a lack of participation in many aspects of national life. So it's understandable, however, and however is an important part of my description. However, they're brothers, and if you are liberal, I consider myself to be liberal, if, you, if I am liberal, I should respect their way of life, I should give it the space it needs, I should not be coercive towards them, though they have to change the attitude towards Israel, you can be secluded, you could be, uh, uh, you could be interested only in the interest of the sector if you are a small portion of the nation. But if you're becoming eventually a quarter of the nation, you cannot go on the same way. So I think the Haredim, who are smart people, eventually understand what I just said. And I really hope that without losing their ideology, they will find a way um, to, to participate in Israeli life in a more uh, responsible way, I would say. It doesn't mean that they have to go to the army and lose their identity. There are many ways of participating in the taking the burden, the, 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 sharing the burden. They can do it in different ways. And I think Israeli society should be tolerating their way of life also. Okay, and um, so on this maybe more optimistic note, what are chances in seeing the 100th Independence Day of Israel? Listen, the major issue uh, in our national life is the lack of agreement, of con consensus about our goal as a nation, about our vision as a nation. We have different sectors here. Each one of the sectors holds by a different ideology and different purpose for a goal for the state. This is not going to go away. 
each one of the sectors is big enough to be influential, but not big enough to have hegemony. And this is the Israeli life of the next generation. Different understanding of reality, different aspirations about how Israel should look like in 25 years. And the key to success, the key to success of Zionism and the next generation is that we will learn how to live together as uh, once I termed it, divided we stand. How can we stand together despite or even because of the division of opinion about the future of Israel? Uh, this dispute is typical for Jewish character. If you look at the Talmud, you'll see it's only disputes. There's never an in conclusion or exclamation card mark. It's always dispute. This is Israeli, I would say, national character today because we're Jews, and this is good. It's not necessarily bad. It tends to be bad if you do not know how to handle the dispute. So what we need, to make it very simple, we need rules for the game, how to conduct our dispute. This might be a constitution. If we'll be able within the next whatever years, few years, to form at least a procedural constitution, meaning the rules for the game, how to handle our disputes, uh, we will be able to reach the 100th anniversary of the state of Israel as one of the richest, most prosperous uh, nations on earth. Okay, uh, maybe to finalize this interview, you were asked to be part of the negotiations at the president's house between the two sides of the political map. Um, can you guess what we're going to see in the coming weeks or months? Well, I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, what I can tell you is that many of the issues uh, can be uh, solved, so to speak. We can come to some kind of agreement. The major dispute right now is around the composition of the committees for, selection, for selecting judges in Israel. This is crucial for both sides. And it looks as if it is binary. Either you have a politicization of the committee or not. And if you put it this way, so it's hard to see how we can reconcile the issue. However, there are many ways of doing things. For example, my suggestion, that's what I bring to the negotiation, is to add to the issues we are discussing more issues. First glance, it complicates things. But I believe it will enable us to come to a different kind of uh, a deal between the parties because the government, the coalition will be able maybe to present to its voters achievements without politicizing the committee. I think we should uh, try to go this way. I cannot tell you that I know it will work out. I really hope it will, uh, but time will tell. Okay, let's hope this will be solved in the very near future. Professor Edidia Stern, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Yom Atzmaut Sameach. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS, Post Office Box 360, Stamford, Connecticut, 06904. Or you can call the JBS pledge line at 833-MY-JBS-TV. That's 833-695-2788. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. We thank you for your kind support.